Hi guys and welcome to Strength Universe. Before we start, I'd like to say thanks to everyone who requested a video on Paul Anderson, who is widely considered to be the strongest man who ever lived. But was he really? Are his lifts credible? And did he use performance enhancing drugs? In this video, I hope to answer those questions and many more. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Paul Anderson was born in Tokawa, Georgia on the 17th of October 1932. He's reported to stand around 5 foot 9 inches tall, and as of 1957, he weighed 164 kilograms or 362 pounds. Paul first began weight training at 14 years old in his family's backyard to increase his size and strength so he was able to play on a Tokawa High School football team, where he earned the position as a first team blocking back. Following high school, Anderson attended Furman University on a football scholarship, but left shortly after and moved to live with his parents in Elizabethton, Tennessee. It was here that he started to take weightlifting more seriously, and after a few months he would meet the deadlift world record holder Bob Peoples, with whom he started to train in his basement gym. Shortly afterwards, Bob Peoples wrote an article about Paul Anderson's potential that was published in the February 1952 edition of Iron Man magazine stating that he'd met a 19-year-old who weighed 275 pounds and had a best squat of 635 pounds, which would have been a world record at that time. Just a few months later, on the 25th of July 1953, at Bill Collins' Strength and Health Picnic in Norfolk, Virginia, Anderson easily squatted 762 pounds, almost 100 pounds more than anyone had achieved before. In 1955, Anderson travelled to the Soviet Union to compete at an international weightlifting competition, at a time when the Olympic record stood at 150 kilograms or 330 pounds. Anderson walked up to a bar loaded with 402.5 pounds and to the shock and awe of the 16,000 spectators, cleaned and pressed it overhead. Later that year, he competed at the World Championships in Munich, Germany, where Anderson went on to establish two further world records for the clean and press with a weight of 407.7 pounds and a total of 1,129.5 pounds, easily winning the competition in his weight class to become the world champion. In 1956, despite suffering from an infection and fever, Anderson won a gold medal in the Melbourne Australia Olympic Games as a weightlifter in the super heavyweight class. Shortly after the Olympics, Anderson turned professional, and thus many of his feats of strength, while generally credible, were not done under rigorous enough conditions to be considered official. It would be from this period until approximately 1963 that Anderson would perform his most notable lifts, and we start by looking at his squat. According to American strength legends, Paul Anderson's heaviest squat was 547 kilograms or 1,206 pounds and a similar weight is reported by the Guinness Book of World Records in 1957. However, as we can see from these pictures, these were only done to partial depth. While performing exhibition lifts at Mapes Casino, Anderson would squat with a bar holding two steel boxes that were supposedly filled with a total of 15,000 silver dollars. Well, the weight of the silver dollars plus the apparatus is a little over 1,100 pounds. <laughs> 15,000 silver dollars at a weight of 26.73 grams each would equate to 883 pounds. Plus the weight of the apparatus, the entire implement could certainly weigh over 1,100 pounds. However, in the TV series The Strongest Man in History, it was shown that the boxes were only ever partially full, and the actual weight was estimated to be around 327 kilograms or 720 pounds. The American Olympic weightlifter and bodybuilder John Grimmick is said to have witnessed Anderson squat 408 kilograms or 900 pounds for 10 reps. If this is true, he would have been capable of squatting over 454 kilograms or 1,000 pounds raw. Paul's best authenticated squat was 422 kilograms or 930 pounds that he performed at an exhibition in 1965 unofficially destroying the raw squat world record at that time. Paul's unofficial record wouldn't be beaten until 2015 by Ray Williams. 
Next, we look at Paul's Bench Press, which was reported by the 1957 edition of the Guinness Book of World Records to be 284 kilograms or 627 pounds, which would have been another unofficial world record that theoretically wasn't beaten until 1971, when Jim Williams pressed 288 kilograms or 635 pounds. The bench press is followed by the deadlift, which again comes from the Guinness Book of World Records and is reported to have been 820 pounds raw. And while this may not sound overly impressive, it unofficially beat the world record at that time, and would unofficially not be beaten until 1974, when John Cuck pulled 385 kilograms or 848 pounds. But even more impressive is that according to SampsonPower.com, Anderson pulled 454 kilograms or 1,000 pounds with the use of metal hooks attached to his wrists, which would be the equivalent of lifting straps today. In theory, this would mean that no one pulled more under the same conditions, e.g. without a deadlift suit but with straps, until Eddie Hall pulled 462 kilograms or 1,018 pounds in 2015. Paul Anderson's best raw squat, bench press and deadlift would in theory provide a 1,078 kilogram or 2,377 pound total. Although in reality, if he had competed, he likely would have scored less than this, he still would have easily beaten the world record at that time, and remained unbeaten in raw competition without the use of knee wraps until 2016 when Ray Williams would achieve a higher total. As well as these lifts, Anderson also had a best claimed clean and press of 220 kilograms or 485 pounds, a best push press out of a rack of 272 kilograms or 600 pounds, and a best one arm press of 172 kilograms or 380 pounds. And finally, we come to Anderson's back lift of 2,840 kilograms or 6,270 pounds that would be withdrawn from the Guinness Book of World Records after 1985 following controversy surrounding the actual weight and lack of evidence. Finally, we come to the controversial subject of whether Paul Anderson used steroids, and although testosterone was isolated by German scientists in 1935 and synthesized by them in the years that followed, its first use in sports didn't come to light until 1954, when the Soviet Union began to dominate weightlifting. Shortly afterwards, the American weightlifting doctor John Ziegler started to develop a steroid to make the USA more competitive, and that would later be released by Ciba Pharmaceuticals in 1958 under the brand name Dianabol. While not impossible, given the timeframes involved, I believe it's highly unlikely that Paul Anderson used performance-enhancing drugs. Taking his plausible natural status into consideration, the era in which he competed, and the fact that many of his unofficial lifts would have been world records that would have remained unbroken for several decades, I believe Paul Anderson could be considered as the strongest man to have ever lived. The only deflection on my opinion is that many of his lifts were self-reported, and while some were witnessed, they were not verified. But as always, I would like to hear your opinion, so please leave a comment below letting me know what you think of Paul Anderson's face of strength. I've left credits and my social media links in the description below, so please check those out and give them a follow. And finally, if you enjoyed the video, please help to support the YouTube algorithm by smashing like, sharing the video, and if you haven't done so already, by subscribing. Thank you.